What's going on, guys? Josh here, Yak Bass and Outdoors, Bob Cox, Pro Fitness Team. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day today. I am sitting out in the garage, even though it's a beautiful, wonderful day, day before 4th of July, and I really want to go ahead and get out on the water and rip some lips, but I'm trying to get everything set up at the beginning of the week for my tournament this Saturday. I know I have been talking about a tournament nonstop, left and right, in all these videos, but I know, and I've missed a lot. Don't get me wrong. Yep, I'm beating myself up about it. I've missed a lot, but I am absolutely 110% positive I will be there this Saturday. North Georgia Kayak Anglers, Dahlonega, Georgia, Yahula Creek Reservoir, Lake Zorner, whatever you want to call it, we're going to be out there. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a good time. Hope everyone, if you're in the area, come check it out. It's going to be a blast. So, I was sitting out here cleaning the boat, and I thought to myself, you know, there's a lot of things that people forget about whenever they are getting into you know, kayak fishing or really setting up a boat for kayak fishing. You know, obviously you're going to have your your rods, your reels, you know, all that basic stuff. But a lot of people forget some of the, some of the, there's there's five to me that pop out in my head that you, you, you almost absolutely really need. So I wanted to show that to y'all and try to explain, you know, my theory behind why I have these five and show y'all how I've got them set up on my boat. So let's get it first little tip i'm going to give you all for setting up your your fishing kayak no matter if you're a beginner or an advanced a lot of people forget about these um the first one is going to be a good deck padding yes you know kayaks are by far one of the most stealthiest boats around especially getting to the good fishing holes and getting to those places at those big bass boats and and cruisers and and center consoles whatever you want to call them get back in the you know that's what kites are good for they can get back in those places that those boats cannot and but whenever you're back in there you don't want to be beating around or dropping things on this hard plastic i mean listen guys it, it, it's not good it's, it's going to spook them all day long especially if they're real finicky and if they're really you know want a finesse presentation you need to be as quiet as possible all the way all the way back to whatever you're wearing so what I think is going to be one of the main ones, you know, as soon as you get your boat and as soon as you take it out and really see how you want to lay it out, you want to get a good deck padding. Right here is the money in the bank. This is called conceal deck padding. Obviously, you can get, you know, that 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 C deck and, and all these other companies make these deck padding, even Vibe. Go check them out, vibekayaks.com. They actually have deck padding set up and already cut out for your Vibe Seagoes whatever it might be you can get it there and the, and they'll get you set up but this is conceal this is you know very very cushiony very quiety whenever you drop something on there and i don't have a shaky head down here let me let me pull up my hatch look even guys whenever you drop that it 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 traps all that sound into that deck padding and that is crucial especially when you're trying to be as quiet as possible and get into them back holes and get into them, you know, them, them honey holes, whatever you want to call them, to catch some big fish, especially fish tournament whenever you got to get on that board. Um, so that is by far one of the one of the main things I put into all my boats whenever I first get them. I, I, it's a must. And also, you know, no matter if you're fishing or not, it's a good thing to have, you know, to, to if you're standing or or paddling, whatever, because this plastic does get hot, guys. All y'all know, I'm sure y'all have touched the side of your boat, and it's just hot as fire. So this is actually, you know, it kind of cuts down that heat and, and it's real cushioning for your feet or your heels, whatever might be sitting on it. So the next thing is going to be, so that's the first one. So let's get into the next one. I'm going to try to get a good picture I can of it. So I just have to point it down. It's going to be rail systems. Okay. There is so many companies that make these rail systems and you know a lot you know a lot of the new boats are starting to come back out with or come come already on the boat whenever you buy it but a lot of the boats can't especially you know if you're the pool man fishing kite like i am you know you need to try to do whatever you can to save that buck you know you can get these things from you know ranging from 20 to all the way up to a hundred dollars sometimes and they are a, by far a great necessity a great thing to have on your boat because you can mount absolutely so much things on these rail systems yak attack makes them i believe scotty milk makes them you know a whole bunch of people and basically you can get all these real uh little attachments this is a ram attachment this is a ram ball right here and they just have this little piece of metal with a screw on the back and all you do is you just unscrew it i'm trying to do it one-handed bear with me then you just slide it right up under there guys 
Once it's slotted, you can put it anywhere on the rail system that you that you that you want it to be. Then you just cinch it all the way down. You just screw it back, and it catches, and it's there. I have I have them all over my boat, from from the back of my boat to the center of the boat to even up here for my camera mounts. I'm telling you guys, it's a must. You can put them in with rivets. You can put them in with self-tapping screws. Just about anything you can get them on. And check out my other video. Just like when I did my uh, drag chain video, I put rivets in to hold that cleat down and to hold them pad eyes down. And you can do that the same thing with these rail systems. All right, so that's number two. Number three is going to be if you're really getting into tournament fishing and you're really, really getting into fishing and really need to know how to find them and so on and so forth, is going to be a fish finder graph, depth, whatever you want to call it. Okay? Mine's a little bit crooked. Let me get y'all set up. All right. Right here. A good, a good, a good graph or a good depth finder, fish finder, whatever you want to call it. I choose Lorentz just because... Not sponsored by them, not you know, pro staff, nothing like that. It's just what I have used a uh, majority of, of, of whenever I've had bass boats and so on and so forth. I've always used Lawrence and, and they're good products. I have a lot of faith in them and, and I like them. This is a Lawrence HDS5, um, as you've seen in my previous videos. Um, this is always going to be on. I also have a Lawrence, I think it's a Hook 4X, something like that. I'm not sure on the model name, but it's it's the smaller screen, and you can get them all the way up from four inch screens to twelve inch screens. It seems like you can have a a whole freaking big screen on this thing, you know. And this really, and this one does have GPS in it, and that's also a plus too, you know. Especially if you if you're trying to you know pre fish for a tournament or really want to, or you you find that brush pile, you want to you want to lay down. Uh, a marker, a point, whatever you want to call it, waypoint, um, and you can drop it right there and you know it's always going to be there. You know, it saves on to it and you're good to go. Okay? This is uh, absolute, you know, I, I believe if you're really getting into tournament fishing, if you're really just getting into fishing in general, this is by far one of the must to have. It's going to be a good depth finder, good fish finder, because a lot of these tournaments or a lot of these places you're going, you've never been before. You know, even when you're pre fishing. So you want to try to. Uh, Try to uh, f figure out where all them honey holes are at. Yeah. So going on is going to be. Y'all've already seen one video on it, and I'm gonna bring it up again because I feel like it is a necessity. Is going to be some type of an anchoring system, some type of drag chain, something along those lines. Um, cause you find that good brush pile, you find that good hole where you're sitting in, and that wind is just blowing you all over the place. So you need something that's going to keep you in that one spot, you know, for however long you want to be in there. I choose, um, a lot of people, you know, you can use the good old anchor trolleys that go along the whole side of the boat. Um, I have not put one on, on the, my Seagoes yet. I'm thinking about it, still debating on it, especially with a stakeout pole. That's another good anchoring system. But I choose to use the uh, drag chain, which I've seen in my other video. Um, it's basically just, you know, two log chains. And they drop them down and I use it mainly for the river that's mainly what I'm using it for but I've also kind of you know universalized it I guess you'd say made it a universal tool. tool um you can use your drag trains for the river or even if the wind's not blowing that bad you can drop these down they should keep you in place um, but also you can attach your anchor straight to them carabiners just like that and you can attach your anchor to it Outstanding, and you know that's what I that's what I've thought. That's what I seem like that helps me the most because I can use it for the river and I can use it for open water too. If I need to drop my my anchor now, I think I got about a five or ten pound anchor. I got a couple of them um, just uh, throughout, but that's the one I'm running right now. Uh, it's shoved back here. I'm not going to pull it all out for you, but yeah, basically, you know, you can just attach that anchor to it and it'll drop you down. Yeah, you might you the front of your boat still might be swaying a little bit left and right, but at least you're in that in that general area of that of that hole or that brush pile and last but not least which probably should have been number two or number one is going to be <clears throat> excuse me is going to be a good crate um i'm sure y'all have seen so many videos and actually on my page you've seen a video of my fishing crate um this is what i'll be using for my tournament this weekend it's just a base old milk crate that i have attached rod holders to i got storage inside i got i got i got waterproof boxes i've got I've got scents, worms, the whole nine. And that comes into play not only for the rod holders, not only for, you know, all the stuff that I've attached to the side of it, but it really is a good thing to have 
you know, say your boat, you know, the sea ghosts don't like in this at all, but some boats like in storage. So if you throw this basic, you know, $5 milk crate, a lot of the times if you go to a lot of these gas stations or the grocery stores, they're just going to give them to you because they're tired of stacking them day in, day in and day out. So they'll just give them to you. So I, and that is to me a must, no matter if you're going on a 30 minute trip or a 10 hour fishing trip, whatever it might be, or if you're just floating to the river, this is a must to have by far. I, as you can see, I got my hog trough attached to it. I got rod holders attached to it and, and sky's the limit whenever you get into attaching the things to it. I mean, you can truly do a lot of damage with just a basic milk crate. Um, it don't even have to be a milk crate. It can be a tackle bag. It can be anything that you can put in behind you or anywhere in your boat that you can attach different stuff to and, and be able to stuff, you know, everything you need for that, that day of fishing. So that is a number five must. Probably should have been number one or two, but it does the same job. But guys, I'm going to get off here. I got a lot more stuff to do. If you're liking what you're seeing, go ahead and smash that thumbs up and if you want to see more of this type of stuff go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if, if you have any question you feel like there's something else that needs to you know that needs to be put in this video or another thing that a lot of people don't think about i'm sure i'm thinking of stuff that I haven't been thinking of i'm sure <clears throat> excuse me i'm sure i have missed stuff that i haven't been thinking of and go ahead and drop that in the comment section below and i will get back to you if you have any questions whatsoever go ahead and do that guys i hope you're enjoying it this is guys if you're fishing i'm jealous if you ain't you're in the same boat as me guys 